an individual has to look at, do they trust the Lord? Do they trust themselves? Or do they trust in another institution or item, whether it be money or government, their education? And it is vitally important that an individual consider the things that they place their trust in. I'm reminded of the account of Abraham when the Lord told him in Genesis, it's recorded, to go to the place that I will show you, which ultimately ended up being Mount Moriah and sacrificed the son you love, Isaac, the son of promise. And Abraham, according to the Genesis account, followed through with the instructions given to him by the word of God. He traveled to the place that God showed him. And he proceeded to build an altar. He bound his son and stretched forth his hand to sacrifice his son. Now, in the book of Hebrews, it says that Abraham reconciled within himself. It didn't say that he discussed the issue with God, that he argued, he debated. He said, well, God, is there another way? Uh, are you sure about this, God? The account in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, it says that Abraham reasoned within himself that God could even raise the dead if needed be. Because in Abraham's situation, there was a conflict. Isaac was the promised son that God stated that a lineage would come through him that would be numerous as the sand of the sea. So therefore Abraham had a conflict within himself and his love for his son and with his understanding and comprehension of the word of God. Because on one hand, he had the promise of God that he would have a son that which was fulfilled through his wife and that through his son, there would be a family lineage, numerous individuals that would come through him. And then now you have the word of God telling him to sacrifice his son. So in Abraham's situation, there was a conflict with the word of God. And yet even in the conflict, Abraham chose to trust God, put his faith in the word of God and the last order given. Now, for you and me, brothers and sisters, we often do not enter into conflicts as serious as Abraham. Sometimes we may and individuals may have those conflicts with our understanding and comprehension of the word of God. Or if we are given a direct revelation or direct prophecy, a prophetic word for our lives, we may experience a similar conflict as Abraham. But for us to experience those conflicts, we at first had 
been walking with God for a period of time because Abraham had been experiencing obeying the word of God for a number of years. He had been walking with God. He had put his hand to the plow, so to speak, according to the word of God. He had packed up his family, which was his wife, his cousin also, Lot, and his wife came with him and they struck out to the land that God had informed him of. This was his first few steps of faith and trust in the word of God. And as we look over Abraham's journey and walk of faith with God, there were some ups and downs, some ins and outs, some great steps and a few missteps. He did not walk perfectly in faith with God, the word of God, at all times. He made a few missteps. Fear caused him to look to his own methods and devices to preserve his life. And fear and a certain level of disbelief also caused his wife to make a decision for the household and recommendation that Abraham chose to enter into that was contrary to the will of God. But overall, Abraham had faith in the word of God. He trusted the direct revealed word of God. Today, brothers and sisters, we have to look at who do we trust and where does our trust lie? Do we feel comfortable in our homes, our apartments, with our jobs that I am making enough money day by day, week by year, I have enough savings I have a cushion, I have a retirement or a pension account, and I can sustain myself for a number of years off of these accounts or assets. Do I have a little rainy day fund? I know a financial planner or manager will tell individuals to put six months expenses up for a rainy day for unforeseen occurrences or even a year worth of expenses eight months in case something happens uh, people buy insurance life insurance policies health insurance policies these are great things these are the tools and the institutions that the secular world has created to give people a peace of mind rest you get a health insurance and you're able to pay that bill they deduct it from your paycheck or you have a health savings account and you place your trust in the insurance policy and the insurance company to take care of your health or at least pay the bills, the doctor's bills, the hospital bills, because you have placed your trust in them to heal you. 
they must be paid so you have insurance and your insurance pays them and you have the deductible. So most people in America and Western countries and developed countries that have these health care and insurance or government sponsored health care, they place their trust in the medical profession for their healing. If they get sick, well, I got insurance. And most often, God is not even mentioned. Well, I have God. <laughs> Before insurance was invented and that economic system was invented, people put their trust in other things. Life expectancy was lower than what we have today in some respects. Let's say 50 or 60, 100 years ago, 1918, the 1800s, they didn't have health insurance. And those rainy day accounts, those six month, eight month emergency expense accounts, or for some people, that next paycheck that's coming in order for them to cover upcoming debts and bills. Or the next two paychecks to cover next month's rent or mortgage. We place our trust in our job, our schedule, being able to work. If we have education, a degree or technical experience and certifications, our skills. We trust in the economy that we will have jobs, we will have work to do, and that we will get paid for our services. So in some respects, we put our trust in our education, in our skills, in ourselves, in order to earn money. I would be pleasantly surprised if a large number of my Christian brothers and sisters seriously applied Deuteronomy 8.18 to their lives. That they put trust in Deuteronomy 8.18. But we all generally look to our bank account to determine our status in regards to our bills. We struggle, many of us, to learn skills, whether in school or in a trade school, to acquire a trade so that we can purchase and finance the things, the items, the cars, the clothes, the food that we need to exist on this earth. And we, if we're diligent, we, we place trust in those things, in our ability to learn, in our adept functioning in our trade and our craft in our salesmanship We're, we consider ourselves good salesmen or good managers, good team members and we can often get a sense of pride when we accomplish certain goals when we make that last car payment or we finish a arduous task from work. We have a hard day. 
when we have increased workloads and we finish them on schedule, we feel a little sense of pride and for a job well done. We pat ourselves on the back. And then the next time we are faced with these challenges, we say, well, we did it before. We trust in ourselves to be handle these increased workloads. Like a workout in the gym. When you increase the weight, it gets tough at first, but then after a while you get used to it, you acclimate your body, your muscle strength increases, and I can do this. I can I can lift this amount of weight. I can do an extra half a mile or mile or a mile. I can walk it, I can run it. My time is increasing. I'm getting better at this. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We realize that and we have a sense of pride. Our self-esteem increases. And we say to ourselves, I I trust that I can, if need be, I can run this mile. I can run this half a marathon, a quarter marathon. I can lift this weight if I need to. And we get a strong feeling of trust in our capabilities and what we are able to do with our body, with our form. With our abilities. And these few scenarios describe a a little deeper insight into the normal day-to-day activities of any ordinary individual. They get up, they go to work, they may exercise, they, they pay bills, they live their life. They discover that they have abilities, that they can do more, or they, they should do less. They have aspirations, they want a bigger this, a bigger that, more of this, more of that. And as we go through life day by day, with this particular perspective of going to work, paying bills, exercising, not exercising, eating, drinking, and we develop a level of trust in ourselves. We we move from children that ha- are fed and clothed and housed by their parents or caretakers to adolescents, to young adults, to mature adults. And the level of trust as from a child trusting in their parents, from an adolescent, somewhat trusting in themselves, but still dependent on their parents, to a young adult that trusts more in themselves becoming independent from their parents and more dependent on themselves and what they can do in this world. And over time, the young adult becomes a mature adult and they become fully independent. They depend on no one but themselves and maybe their partner. Whatever that may be, they develop relationships, their own 
set of friends. Some of their friends they can depend on, others they really can't depend on them for anything less or more than good conversation. And the young adult eventually develops a certain level of self-sufficiency. And the decisions that they make no longer have to please mommy and daddy. Since they are now self-sufficient, they have their own resources. They can make decisions that better suit their particular mindset, attitude, and preferences. They no longer have to do things because, well, mommy and daddy will like this choice. Once you reach a level of self-sufficiency and trusting in yourself as being sufficient, then you make your own choices with the resources and the level of sufficiency that you have. You design your residence the way you want. You listen to the music that you want. You eat what you can supply for yourself. You see who you want, when you want, why you want. Eat what you want, drink what you want. When you want and why you want. According to your level of sufficiency, self-sufficiency. And these young adults, they go out and they get hired on at company XYZ. And company XYZ pays them a salary or a certain rate, wage. And they trust in company XYZ or Enron or WorldCom. Tyco, any one of these companies, XYZ, they place their trust in their pension plan, their retirement plans. And that is one of the factors in their self-sufficiency that they place their trust in. And they get up every day and try to make it to work on time to punch in and be a productive individual for company XYZ because company XYZ pays them money for the work that they perform so that they can buy what they want eat what they want, drink what they want live where they want how they want and maintain their self sufficiency and those of us that have good jobs well-paying jobs, jobs where we're comfortable, where we are have a good work-life balance. We feel sufficient, we feel, we feel pleased. Uh, no one likes to go to work every day, but if you have a employment or career that provides you with a level of self-sufficiency that is adequate for your preference, then you, you feel pleased and some some may often feel pride in the employment that they have obtained. But brothers and sisters, there's one important thing that I have failed to mention for an extended period of time in discussing our work life and sufficiency and abilities I have begun this message talking about Abraham and his walk of faith with God with his placing his trust in God and developing a relationship and an understanding that his sufficiency 
comes from God. And Abraham had a difficult time with that because he did make a few errors in doing things his way with Pharaoh and Abimelech. He had a scheme and did things his way on occasion. But he was a man of faith at the most important times in his life. And faith not in worldly institutions because they didn't have insurance back then. They didn't have 401ks, investments, retirement funds. You had to fight for what you needed and defend your property during Abraham's time. And that's why I mentioned in the early 1800s and 1900s in America before there were all these institutions of insurance and, and retirement plans and things of that sort. Institutions that people put their trust in today, not that they're bad in institutions are bad things, but do people substitute their trust in God for trust in a 401k? And when you make such comparisons, what real benefit do you have when you compare trust placing your trust in God and placing your trust in a well-heeled 401k account. There's nothing wrong with having it and trusting, placing a certain level of trust in it. But do you put all your eggs in that one basket or is it a better investment to put more eggs in God, trust in his word, and maybe a few eggs in the worldly systems of this earth. Because I did mention Deuteronomy 8.18, which states that, or rather encourages, believers to remember the Lord your God because it is he who gives you the ability to get well. For a considerable portion of this message I, I purposely described the manner in which people derive and place their trust in earthly and secular institutions, how they develop their sense of self-sufficiency and self-esteem and trusting in them, their selves and what they can do or trusting in their bank accounts. And I purposely didn't mention God because oftentimes when we're living our day-to-day -day lives, we, we're thinking about company XYZ we're thinking about paying our rent, our mortgage. We're thinking about this car, that car, maintaining our car, having money, being self-sufficient as a young adult, as a teenager, when I get on my own, when I can make my own decisions. And while we are thinking about these important factors we're forgetting the most important factor is that is the Lord our God that gives us the ability to derive and create wealth in this earth and I hope and pray that it is more often than not that people are on their knees praying about 
this new position, this job, this issue in their life, rather than worrying about their resume or if they're qualified, that they're play, praying and putting their trust and faith in God to give them the ability and the skills and open the door so that they can do the things that they need to do personally, socially, and economically in this earth for the glory of God and his kingdom purposes that are aligned with each and every individual's life purposes while in this present earth. I hope and pray that individuals are not worrying about keeping up with the Joneses, but rather worrying about keeping in line, keeping their family, their children, their husband, their wife, their parents, those that they can have influence with, keeping these individuals in line with the word of God and his purposes for their life. I would hope that would be the top priority. Because you see, brothers and sisters, when you put your trust in God, in his word, through Jesus Christ, and you have evidentiary proof, shoe leather, when your shoe leather hits the pavement, by word and deed, by prayer and commiserate action, God opens up the windows of heaven and pours you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. So any worrying, any stress that we should be doing about making ends meet should be put in faith and trust in the Lord. And we should rest. that he will provide. And brothers and sisters, I'm not saying that we should not have personal aspirations. We should not set goals for ourselves based on our own understanding in certain areas. What I'm saying is that we should always incorporate a knowledge and, and, and good understanding of God and theology in all of our practices and processes and methods and aspirations. And just like Daniel and his Hebrew compatriots that were cons conscripted into a pagan environment, they incorporated to the best of their ability, their knowledge and the law of God. And it was God that allowed them to excel above all of their other students in that Babylonian school and training center. And it was God that caused them to be placed in positions of authority throughout a pagan land because of their trust and the level of trust, sincere trust and faith in the word of God and the God of their forefathers and ancestors and people that activated and released the blessings of God in their lives. Brothers and sisters, we can do things our way, my way, and that path will lead you to a certain level of sufficiency and even what appears to be success in this world. But it often will lead you away from God. If you're not diligent, and purposeful in incorporating the word of God and a relationship with the Lord and God of your salvation and soul and eternal life into your life in this present world. 
the path of doing it my way generally leads to forgetting about God and placing trust in God. Because why else would God tell us in Deuteronomy 8.18 to remember that it is the Lord your God that gives you the ability to get well. So brothers and sisters, let us remember. Let us reconcile. And let us reconnect to our God through the Lord Jesus Christ our trust and our faith and all sufficiencies shall come through our heavenly Father. And in Jesus' name, let us pray. Amen.